Tonight's quilt has a lot, and I mean lots of triangles, but it's okay because we're going to use templates to make them. Let's get to it. Tonight's quilt is Astro, and it was designed by Colorworks, and we are gonna see a lot of color working on this quilt with these beautiful, boundless, basic ombres. What I love about ombres is it gives your quilt a little sparkle by still having a nice, solid look. So many pretty colors. Well, I can't just sit here and fondle it all day. Let's get to cutting. Okay, so the fact of the matter is this pattern uses some templates, which is not my favorite thing in the world. I tend to have a personality and where I like to get things done really quickly, not so much perfect. I'm sure you can't imagine that at all. But what's great about this pattern is they have us cut out strips which make the template cutting a little bit easier. So I'm gonna start by cutting up my ombres into strips and then pull out my templates and try to cut out a bunch of different shapes to make this quilt. So I've cut out my paper template. I have used my plastic to cut out the shape so it's a little bit more you know, sturdy and I have a few of my shapes already ready to go. But here's the most important thing, make sure you print your templates out to scale. I mean, it's happened to me a couple times where your printer will automatically scale it down and you have a bunch of pieces that don't exactly fit. That does not make for a good night of quilting. The pattern is having me cut two of these shapes out of the orange. All right, so aligning it where it goes, I'm gonna cut it carefully out, trying not to cut into that plastic. You know, sometimes when you end up with your pieces getting smaller and smaller and smaller as you shave off that fabric. And the template even has a little notch cut out, which is gonna make it really nice when it's time to actually start sewing this together. So I'm gonna make sure I get that notch cut out as well. So for some of the templates that don't have a right or wrong side, I can double up the fabric so that I'm actually cutting out two pieces at once, which will make the process go a little bit faster. However, this template does have a notch on one side, so I'm gonna open them up and make sure the notch is always on the side it should be. Oh, I feel like this is taking forever. And this is not a difficult shape. I mean, surely I've got something that is shaped like some of these templates. And if there's one thing I know about quilters is we have a lot of rulers, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna dig through my stuff and see if I can't find something that's similar. I mean, I have a ruler or two around here. I've got this. Nope, I've got this. This is not even a straight line. That's not gonna help me. That's close, too small. I mean, come on, with all these specialty rulers, I've surely have got one that works. Let's see, I, I don't even know what that is. Hmm. Why would I have this? Weird. I got that one. This was under my chair. I've got two the same size. These aren't even four piecing, but man, if I could find one that would work. All these specialty rulers and not the one I need. Eek. All right, well, I guess I'll just get back to cutting with templates so I can finally put some of these blocks together. Still don't know where I got that one at. So I may not have the perfect ruler, but I've kind of rigged something up that I think will help me. I've taped my two templates, my paper and my plastic, so I can have both of my sides on the ruler. I don't know if it'll make it quicker, but it does make it a little bit more fun. So there's that. So I can align my template and use my ruler to help cut so that I'm not trying to keep my template still and my ruler still. Not a lot of fun. And then I can switch it around. Huh, fantastic. I don't know, what do you think? Do you like working with templates? Do you have any tips or tricks I haven't thought of? Leave them in the comments below because I think my template game needs a little bit of help. Well, I'm gonna finish cutting these out and we'll see how they all come together to make a variety of triangles. I've got all the pieces I need to make the four different blocks that are gonna make up the quilt. And the first shape was very difficult, but I was able to power through. Well, okay, it's just a piece of fabric. So there's no piecing to that one, so check that off the list. The next shape is gonna use a half hexagon and a triangle, and we'll sew it together like so, and that will make shape two. So be sure to follow the pattern and make sure the notches are in the correct place. But then I'm gonna fold them right sides together and align them up. And since these aren't exactly the same exact shape, this point is gonna extend past it just a little bit, but what I'm looking at is that notch is lined up with the edge of my area. And then a quick quarter inch seam, and then I have the shape two already ready to go. Shape three isn't any more difficult. I'm just using the two longer triangles that I have to piece together like this. 
I'm gonna press the seam open and I'll have my next shape. Now the last one gets a little bit trickier, not difficult, but we're gonna use several of these triangles to make a more complex piece block. And I'll start by sewing them together in a row here. And then this one will go that direction. And the last triangle folds right sides together like that, another quarter inch seam, and then I'll have the fourth shape ready to go. Now what's awesome about this pattern is it tells you exactly what fabrics to use and which shape to make this really cool color wash effect. So I'm gonna repeat that with all the different colors until I have several of the blocks. Have you ever had a quilt pattern that said something like, lay out the blocks in a pleasing manner? While there's nothing wrong with it, sometimes I want the pattern to tell me exactly which color goes where. And the good news is, this pattern does just that. So I've laid out part of the first row, and this is where we're gonna to start to see these color placements really make this quilt shine. And I love how similar colors are gonna to come together and help the triangle shape almost disappear. It's almost like we won't see the individual elements. But we do have to sew them together, so I'll bring my first two blocks down, place them right sides together, and then sew. This is where the notches are gonna come in handy. It's gonna help us line up our blocks and ease some of the bulk in those seams. These next two will come together. And these will be nice and easy to sew because the angles are both exactly the same. It's just as simple as lining it up and sewing it together. And if I'm being honest, what I really love about this pattern is if I put some blocks the wrong way, upside down or not quite in the right place, you're never gonna be able to see it anyway. So I'm gonna keep sewing these together until I have my first row finished. And there I have the first row of my quilt. And if you look closely, you can see the triangle shapes. But as I add the other rows, they're all gonna start to blend in. And speaking of other rows, I happen to already have the second row finished and ready to go. And this is where we really start to appreciate the ombre fabrics, the beautiful colors. My mind is already whirling with quilting ideas. So even though we have a lot of different pieces, it's still on a grid. I'm gonna have these areas where the points are gonna match and that's gonna help me keep it on track. Now when I fold it right sides together, I'm gonna take just a second and make sure I clip it in place so that those points somewhat come close together. But here's what's great about this quilt. There's so many different colors, so many different shapes. If it doesn't end up perfect, well, you know I'm fine with that. Well, now that I had them all clipped in place, it's time to sew them together and we'll see what the first two rows look like. And like a beautiful rainbow has exploded in my quilting room, the first two rows of this are finished. But if you think this looks amazing, wait till you see the rest of the quilt. It only gets better from here. Such beautiful colors. All I have to do is finish this last seam and the quilt will be finished and then I get to quilt it. Since I had so much fun with rulers and templates and piecing this quilt, I think I'm gonna continue the trend and do a little machine quilting with rulers. In the warmer colors, I'm gonna do a clamshell, which I haven't really done before, and in the cooler colors, I'm gonna go straight lines all the way. So, I better get to it. So aligning the ruler with one of my seams, I'm gonna quilt along the biggest clamshell going from one side to the other. Then I'm gonna reposition the ruler and do the same in continuing along. Now instead of quilting a whole row of clamshells, I'm gonna stop on a half clamshell, and later I'll come back and join it. But since I wanna add a little bit more quilting, I'm gonna quilt a curved line that's the opposite direction, making a, almost like an orange peel shape, going from point to point. Free motioning this is gonna allow me to get it done faster, but still have that precision look of using a ruler. Once I get to my starting point, I'm gonna travel along the seam, realign my ruler, and repeat, quilting around the clamshell, repositioning the ruler, working my way along until I'm ready to stop, and then free motion filling in, quilting those curves, returning back to my starting point. So even though I'm not filling the whole area in with clamshells, it's okay. Quilting a partial row works just as fine because later I'm gonna come back, hook into that same design, and continue on. Now I'm doing that in all the warm colors, but I think I'm gonna go with a little contrasting design and do some straight line quilting in the cooler colors. A quick change of the thread, and it'll be time to start quilting. Starting from the edge of the area, I'm gonna quilt a diagonal line at a random angle. When I hit a seam, I'm gonna change direction so that it's not perfectly straight, but now a different angle. Once I get to the edge of the area that I can comfortably reach, I'm gonna travel along one of the seams and repeat my way back, quilting a straight line, but when I get to that seam, angling a different direction. Traveling and repeating. Angling down, hitting the seam, changing direction. Now I'm trying to change up the widths and vary the spacing so I kind of get a different, more modern look to it. The result is straight lines that are easier to quilt because I don't have to go in one continuous motion. It's also gonna help me highlight some of the seams and really give a cool texture to this part of the quilt. 
Using rulers for machine quilting is a great way to get a lot of fun different looks easily. And if it seems a little too confusing, don't worry. It just so happens I have a class on Blueprint called Quilting with Rulers Free Motion Made Simple. So you can check that out in which I use both the straight and the clamshell ruler. I think you'll like it. Plus the instructor seems pretty funny, so that's a bonus. <laughs> okay, well I'm gonna finish this up quilting straight lines and my orange peels. I'll show you what it looks like when I'm all finished. So this Astro quilt is finished. I'm loving the different color placement. It's one thing I didn't have to think about. What I could focus on though, was how I could create such different textures using the rulers. Between straight lines, orange peels, and to be honest, there were little bobbles here and there, but the overall effect is amazing. So what do you think about the quilt? Is this one you think you'd like to tackle? I would love to see your thoughts in the comments below. And don't forget, if you wanna get better with quilting with rulers, I do have that class on Blueprint, Machine Quilting with Rulers, Free Motion Made Simple. There's a link to that below as well. Well, I'll see you next time on the episode of the Midnight Quilt Show. Happy quilting.